Welcome back. Frequency distributions. It turns out there's two kinds of frequency distributions and the difference um, is easiest to see in their shape. There's a normal distribution, which is going to be shaped like a bell. It's nice and symmetric and simple. And there are skewed distributions, which look like a normal distribution that someone has stepped on. Let's start with the normal distributions. Sometimes they're called bell curves because they're literally shaped like bells. Um, most of the data falls in the middle. So the peak is always in the middle and it's beautifully symmetric on either side away from the peak. Um, you'd be surprised how much data um, falls on a normal distribution. Height, intelligence, blood pressure, exam scores, heart rate, you name it, all of those fall on normal distributions. Um, here's some more examples of norm normal distributions. Um, you can see there's normal distribution for SAT scores. There's a normal distribution for IQ scores. Here are some sort of normal distributions for um, uh, temperature, summer temperatures in the northern hemisphere. They were more bell-shaped in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, in the 90s and 2000s, it's starting to skew a little bit. But there are a lot of normal distributions. And normal distributions, bell curves, have this beautiful property that a distribution is normal if the mean, the mode, and the median are all the same number. So with the San Fernando Valley widget company or the incomes that I talked about before, those are skewed values. In the US, wealth is distributed in a very skewed way. It is not a normal distribution at all. So um, here's a mathematically precise example of a, nor of a normal distribution. The mean, the mode, and the median all fall on the, the middle point. Um, you can see that about 70% of the data fall nicely within the sharpest part of that curve. And then as you go out towards the tails on each end, smaller numbers of measurements can be found on those tails. Um, the, the normal distributions are also symmetric. So if you go to the mean, there's the same number and distribution of data points below the mean as there is above the mean. So they're symmetric. One side is the mirror reverse of the other. So on this graph, um, you see a mean, a normal distribution on the left, and you can see that the mean, the mode, and the median all line up. And on the right, the two graphs on the right show you two types of skewed distributions. One is skewed to the left, so that there's uh, more data to the left or lower numbers. And one is skewed to the right, so that there's more data or numbers to the right. Now, with skewed distributions, the mean, the mode, and the median differ. So the salary examples that we've been using are skewed distributions, and that's why the mean, the mode, and the median all differ. You may have seen a skewed distribution in some of your classes. If you have a class that's really, really hard, then the distribution of scores on an exam might be skewed so that most people get terrible scores. I remember back a million years ago when I was an undergraduate and took organic chemistry, uh, we definitely had distribution skewed to the left. So like the average score would be 33% correct on an exam. That's skewed one way. You could also be taking a really easy class. And in really easy classes, there's, those distributions are skewed as well. They're skewed so that most students get A's and B's. So the skew just tells you, um, you know, what kind of grades people are getting. If an exam is just right, then the distribution should be normal, right? So you should have like most students getting maybe B's and C's, and then it drops off from there. Uh, here's an example of a skewed distribution in the real world. 
uh, music downloads. Some people think, oh, I'm just going to make a million bucks by putting my music out there and people will download it and pay me and that's great. Except the problem is the distribution of music downloads is skewed. A few songs get download are downloaded a lot by a lot of people. Most songs are almost never downloaded. So that's a skewed distribution. Um, here's a funny graph. Uh, this is a skewed distribution that shows that the likelihood of dying in any year is skewed such that older people are a lot more likely to die than younger people. Um, I'm not sure who got funded to do that study. It's sort of a duh, but there's a, there's a skewed distribution. Older people are more likely to die in any year. Uh, here is a, another skewed distribution. This is US, U.S. household incomes in the year 2015, um, and it is skewed. It's skewed and has this funny tail. So it's skewed. Most of the salaries are at the low end of the salary spectrum, except for this weird tail um, of super high, ridiculously high salaries that a few people have. That's definitely skewed. Uh, more examples of skewed distributions. Um, if I were to measure the heights of hobbits, I'd have a skewed distribution where most of the measurements would be short. If I were going around and measuring the heights of NBA and WNBA players, that would be skewed. Everybody would be really tall. Here's a funny skew. Um, since we're in California, I pick an earthquake example. Um, most of us in California think, hey, you know, we know earthquakes. We've got earthquakes. But in the last 10 years, it turns out that Oklahoma, of all places, has had an explosion of the number of earthquakes. Um, back in 2007, 2008, they had basically none, maybe one little earthquake a year. Um, by uh, 2015, they were up to almost 900 earthquakes a year. To go from one earthquake a year to 900 earthquakes a year, you see a skewed distribution, you gotta wonder, what is going on here? There are a number of people in Oklahoma trying to determine whether um, a technique of extracting uh, oil from underground might be responsible for the increase in earthquakes in Oklahoma. The technique is fracking, and fracking involves injecting um, stuff into the ground to try to force rocks to break so the gas and petroleum can come out. So you're putting all this force in the, the plates um, that are underneath the ground, and maybe that's what's causing the earthquakes. They're certainly correlated. There's certainly a correlation between the use of fracking and the increase of earthquakes, but you know what correlations are. They are not causal. So people now are trying to shut down some fracking to see if that changes distributions of earthquakes. So to try to do something experimental instead of just correlational. Uh, there's also a um, really famous scientist, a guy by the name of Stephen Jay Gould, who uh, has a paper on the importance of the shape of distributions. Um, and it's called, The Median is Not the Message. And here's the deal. Stephen Jay Gould was diagnosed with a um, terrible kind of cancer. I can't remember what it was now. It was a rare form of cancer. And the doctors told him the median lifespan um, for people who were diagnosed with this particular kind of cancer was to live eight months after diagnosis, eight months. Um, Stephen Jay Gould, being a really smart guy, said, huh, I wonder why he said, the doctor said median. And he went back and did the research and he found out that the distribution of life expectancies for this unusual kind of cancer was a skewed distribution with a really long tail. And Dr. Gould decided, you know what? I'm gonna be in that tail. And amazingly, I don't know how, he managed it. He lived another 20 years, 
This is a guy who was told he the median was to live eight months. He lived another 20 years and he didn't even die of that cancer. He died of a different cancer. So the median isn't the message. In other words, distribution matters a whole lot. Uh, next, we're going to talk about uh, variability. So come back for that.